Bitcoin snobs. Welcome to the first of what I hope would be a monthly update on what uh, I decided to add to the seller the month of uh, August. I'm going to try to do some of these in retrospect because I do keep records, um, loose records of what I add to the seller. Uh, wines that I found to be um, interesting or have good potential uh, for long term and also presented great value. For the month of August, I decided to add to the seller after review um, these four wines. I think they present great value uh, for what they offer. And uh, they're lesser known. I don't see, you don't see very much about them. They're not terribly hyped up, but uh, definitely off the beaten path as far as uh, what I can access here in California and thanks to the folks over at wine.com uh, they're pretty accessible uh, whenever they come in stock I get an alert and uh, I had a really good um, feedback from reviewing them a while ago earlier this summer and thought I should definitely add a couple more so I just added for the month of August a few bottles of each of these to the seller and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them. The first one here is a Rioja Vina Bosconia by R. Lopez. It's a very long name. I'm going to put it on the screen below. <laughs> um, this one is a 2007 Rioja um, from Spain and uh, it showed really good. Um, it really showed really well during review. Um, reviewed it about a month or so ago, maybe two months, and uh, I loved what what I saw and uh, how it uh, presented itself, especially for 2007. Still shows great potential, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful right now. I highly recommend. Uh, the second one is an Aglianico from Italy, San Gregorio. Um, love it. Uh, this is uh, a 2016. And uh, it's, if you're familiar with this particular varietal, it's not terribly sophisticated as far as layering and, and such and complexity. But what it does, it does really well. So think uh, Cab Franc, think uh, uh, Turiga Nacional, and there's a couple other varietals, uh, Nebbiolo. They're, they have very strong, specific characteristics which I like how, they, how they, uh, those display within uh, these specific varietals, their specific characteristics. So I like that a lot. Um, I like this one for the price and the value as well. So we're adding a couple more bottles. I have a few more from the last review I did, so I'm adding a few more. Another interesting gem is uh, this uh, Nebbiolo, Gemme. Sanova, Sanova. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Put the name below as well. This is a 2010 and uh, doesn't get much attention. Highly rated um, and uh, I think a great price for what you get. I reviewed this as well and there will be links below as well on uh, my reviews for these as well as links on where you can go pick these up. Uh, but I highly recommend add a couple more of these. I already have a couple from the last review and uh, they ran out of stock after I reviewed them. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it, but uh, there was new stock and I decided to pick a couple more. And finally, we have this uh, La Postol from uh, Chile, uh, Valle de Rappel, and it's a Sauvignon Blanc. This is an amazing bargain. Uh, this Sauvignon Blanc drinks like a $60 bottle, to be honest. Uh, but you can find these for, I can't remember, somewhere between $11 and $13 on wine.com. Uh, this is a great bargain, a head scratcher, to be honest. You chill this a little and uh, it's gonna blow you away, to be honest. And for the price, it. <laughs> It feels like winning all the way. Uh, it's a great wine, great value. This is a shining example, in my opinion, of you know something I like to say a lot, which is 
not all expensive wine is good and not all good wine is expensive so uh, this I highly recommend there will be links below as well on this lineup so there it is for the month of August this was the culmination of uh, my review and what I thought we need to add and track with and follow long term in the cellar so typically what's going to happen is when I decide to revisit certain wines that I review uh, based on the impressions that I had I I usually come back and start tracking them and some of them uh, probably about half of them I'll end up tracking long term so we're we're probably going to see these wines popping up in the review pipeline down the road a year from now a couple years from now based on my notes I'll determine how freak the frequency with which I would like to revisit I know with uh, this Rioja it's a 2007 I would love to re you know revisit this at least once a year uh, it's a really great wine great candidate great value and the fact that you can pick this vintage up this appropriately aged mature vintage you can literally just buy this it's, it's not there's no fuss about uh, such an aged appropriately aged vintage um, so yeah there you have it this is the August wines and next we're going to look at some of the wines that caught my interest and we're going to talk about those as well and we're going to be looking at those moving into September all right now we're moving into uh, this, this September lineup and these were wines I saw and found searching and digging around and I thought there was of particular interest some of them had fairly high scores high ratings um, and a very approachable price which is one of the things I like to weigh a lot uh, it's I for me it's just not enough to have a high rating but it needs to be accessible uh, and if I'm going to review a wine if I'm going to talk about a specific wine I like I like to think that it helps if most of the majority of the audience finds these accessible and affordable and within reach um, typically uh, my the feeling I get when I see a highly rated highly priced wine is uh, it's probably it's not really off the beaten path it's uh, built up too much of a reputation and uh, becomes less interesting in my mind um, and there's a lot of marketing involved in that respect as well and so it kind of becomes highly questionable so without further fuss um, let's look into the wines that I picked up here's a Bonaventure uh, it's from Chinon so I recently reviewed a Chinon wine uh, Cab Franc and uh, this is in France it's uh, the Loire Valley and uh, it had a lot of great feedback from from the wine snobs from my wine snobs <laughs> and uh, so I thought perhaps we should look we should look at this region a little more so I looked through what we had available what was in stock and uh, based on what I just talked about uh, ratings and scores as well as price point and accessibility and uh, this is what I came up with one of one two that was that seemed to be a good balance um, and uh, another one from Chinon that um, I picked up was this one, the Paul Paul Buis, um, another Cab Franc, and uh, what I found was uh, the wines were pretty terroir driven, so you could really the terroir was really well expressed. This is something I found slightly unusual for Cab Franc. Again, most of the Cab Francs I've had are Californian, and it usually does not express itself in this form. So I found that very interesting. So I look forward to talking about these and uh, yeah, it's exciting. Another one, um, this is from, we might as well stay on that side of the Atlantic. Um, another one is from uh, Travaglini and uh, they, I love their Nebbiolos. I've reviewed their Nebbiolos before and uh, it's their Gattinara, beautiful Nebbiolos. They have this interesting sculpted bottle it's very unique and uh, there'll be links below on that as well um, but uh, they have a nebbiolo here coste de la sesia 
and I thought I'd give it a try. So we'll give it a try. I'll be talking about this. They make such great wines, um, such high quality, well-built wines that I don't think it's going to be, uh, it's going to hurt to take a look at this. So it's probably definitely going to be making the reviews as well. Um, next I'd like to talk about is one of my favorite wineries in Napa, uh, Louis Martini. They have a Cab Sauve from uh, Sonoma County and uh, I love their wines. I love what they do, especially with their Cabs and Cab Francs. Just beautiful wines at, at a relatively um, approachable price for Napa, of course. Um, but this is a 2017 and it comes at a very approachable uh, price point. I can't remember off the top of my head. You'll see in the links below. So we're going to take a look at it and uh, have a chat about it. This may turn out, I anticipate, based on what I've seen so far with their wines, I anticipate this is going to make a great EDC wine, that is, everyday consumption wine. Um, a great wine within well within reach that you can pick up a half case, maybe even a case, and enjoy with friends casually. Um, so I look forward to that, Louis Martini. Now, and finally, well, let's talk about this one. I recently, earlier this uh, <laughs> summer, um, maybe in the spring, I had a look at uh, a cab sauve by Martin Ray. They're based out of uh, Santa Rosa, I believe. And that was a Napa cab. They had a Napa cab that I reviewed earlier. I'll put a link below as well. And that showed really, really, really well. I really liked what I saw. Um, their focus is, you know, terroir driven wines. Um, and uh, from what I saw with that Napa cab, uh, this Pinot Noir popped up on wine.com. And uh, I thought I'd give it a try. I suspect I will not be disappointed. And uh, being a Pinot Noir, I anticipate I'll be able to gain further insights into the winemaker's craft and his principles and philosophies and his style in general, or her style in general. I, so I very much look forward to it. It's from the Sonoma Coast, known to make really, really great Pinot. Um, I love the leather that comes through from the Sonoma region in general, especially the coast. So I look forward to this uh, Martin Ray Pinot. In fact, I'm really itching to put it into the pipeline, the review pipeline here <laughs> pretty soon. This is a 2018 and uh, there'll be links below as well. So there you have it. That's the August lineup and uh, I uh, hope to uh, get stay on this and do more reviews of uh, um, my exploits and discoveries ventures off the beaten path a lot of the other wines that I review are uh, so far off the beaten path and and not available um, say on wine.com even though the folks at wine.com do a great job um, a lot of the wineries that I'll explore are so small they're very artisan wines and uh, it's difficult they, they don't produce enough um, to really get into any kind of distribution channel and part of the reason why i love working with wine.com is they actually take the time to seek out these small artisan wineries and i've found about 60 percent of these small artisan wineries are actually carried um, and represented at wine.com which is great because if you're outside of california you can still order a lot of these wines and have them shipped to you. Whereas a lot of these wineries just don't have the type of volume and size and scale to justify investing in a, dis in a nationwide distribution channel. So it really helps. Um, uh, I, I found that being so far off the beaten path, uh, the, the wines I talked about, most of my readers and followers uh, couldn't access them they couldn't actually partake and enjoy and sharing them so uh, working with wine.com now makes them much more accessible so we're going to be talking i'm going to start doing individual reviews of these different wines which is most of these you see behind me here 
um, we're going to be talking about those um, off the beaten path and where you can order and where you can find them. There'll be links below. Be sure to visit winesnob.blog and uh, check the shopping link and you'll have a lot of those listed and uh, you'll have tips on how to use uh, wine.com to access those wines um, fairly affordably um, and uh, explore all these regions without having to come out here. You can literally join and follow along and uh, you're welcome to provide your, me with your notes, send your notes over and uh, if you'd love to do a guest review that's also welcome so just uh, get in touch with me on Instagram on the blog in the comments below if there's any particular wine you'd love to see visited on winesnob.blog please feel free to mention the comments below if you have any feedback on any of the wines you saw here today please your feedbacks welcome for any of these specific regions if there's something that really shouted out to you or caught your attention or appealed to your palate also share that in the comments below get in touch on instagram or on the blog or on twitter and uh, i'd love to talk more about your experiences and your ventures off the beaten path so until the next time cheers wine snobs <laughs>